In the purpose-built Longside Sculpture Gallery at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, the Arts Council collection have brought together the work of 40 artists from between 1977 and 1986, a period which saw the emergence of a new young generation of British sculptors. Can you tell us a little bit about how this show came about? We wanted to look at about how artists had worked in the period of the 80s and a number of them had risen to prom prominence during that period and in spite of a sort of international reputation there seemed to be very little um, survey exhibitions or publications on the period. It's also because we've always as a collection bought quite ambitious work, particularly sculpture and we had some very rich holdings in the collection, works by Deacon, Cragg, Alison Wilding, Cornelia Parker. So it seemed a moment then to start surveying this and putting it together and just seeing um, where, how sculpture had developed in Britain in that period. It is quite a specific period. You've got 1977 to 1986. What is it particularly about this period that is defining the history of British sculpture? Well, for us, I think, post you know, the end of the 70s and um, you had those names like Richard Long doing his walks, Hamish Fulton, and people like Cragg and Anthony Gormley had actually worked with Richard Long and uh, they'd taken walks in the country. I discovered this from working on the Land Art Show. And then their paths seemed to diverge and there was this moment of artists coming back into the gallery to actually construct things. And rather than actually carving or moulding or casting. They seem to be assembling things somehow, a completely different approach. So we thought this was quite an interesting thing. And then, of course, 1986 um, was the year of Henry Moore's death, so it seemed a pivotal moment um, in history, in the British art history, and the sort of developments then changing and moving in a different direction. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the process of curating this show? Yes, well Natalie Rudd and myself have been working on it for not so long actually, about a, about a year. Mm -hmm. And it was always going to be an Arts Council Sculpture Collections display. Um, but we had the, the opportunity to supplement it with additional loans and other private and public collections. So I think of the 50 or so sculptures in this room, half are from the Arts Council Collection and half are loans. And what we, as you see here, this is a, a purpose-built sculpture display venue. It's for sculpture. It, it's uh, perfect for that rather than, let's say, for photography or film or painting. So from the outset, we, were, we knew we wanted to give people a sculpture exhibition and a really good sculpture exhibition. So looking back over the 77 to 86 period, we were making some very kind of um, subjective decisions on wow factor work, works that really reminded people about what all the incredible song and dance was about sculpture in this period. So there's some fantastic works by Bill Woodrow, Richard Deacon, Tony Cragg, Kate Blacker, little known works and amazing works by Richard Wilson, Veronica Ryan. So we pulled what we felt to be um, the strongest and most visually compelling and intellectually compelling sculptures in the collection and then supplemented it with other friends, other, other works. So we borrowed what I think is one of Tony Craig's best plastic wall pieces, um, postcard, postcard Union Jack, 1981, from Leeds Museums and Galleries. A few works we borrowed from private collections, and the one behind us here, um, Nicholas Pope's 15 Holes, I think is a fantastic sculpture. And uh, Natalie and Nick talked about where this might go, and I think one that Nick was very keen on, for example, was having it quite near the window. Yeah. So you'd see this work in all of its wonderful, clunky, shonky woodiness against the backdrop of the Yorkshire Sculpture Park landscape there. So it would be viewed through that, through that lens, if you like. Are there any particular themes or conversations between different works here that you would like to draw out? Well, I think the themes are this sense of construction that is evident in the whole show. And the title comes from the Julian Opie piece over there, which is called Making It that's been lent by Tate. And it, it is that return to construction, the idea of sawing and hammering and making things, but not in that sort of what we traditionally consider as sculpture up until this period. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the underlying themes, but you can also see a diverse, pract diverse practices here. 
And I think the amount of processes that you see both in this large room and in the smaller room are um, quite, um, quite revealing that sculpture, making sculpture, was not just about carving, modelling, constructing, obviously, but about other kinds of often hybrid making uh, processes and approaches. Often with the same object, you get bits of reassembled, re-scavenged, recycled, re-salvaged materials alongside made sections, alongside crafted sections. So the panoply of our making was something that we were very keen to, to work with and explore and push a bit. I think with this room, it's obviously a large room, um, large gallery scaled work looks good here. If we just had this room alone, where we would have only had 20 sculptures, so we're really keen to represent the smaller scale work that you find in the room next door. So there's something of the studio, of the laboratory, of the workshop, of the potential energy of the model and maquette in those smaller works that we really didn't want to lose sight of. I mean, I could say the one thing about the Arts Council collection is it's, you know, since it was formed in 1946, it's always supported an artist by buying them at an early point in their uh, career, a sort of pivotal moment when um, they're just on that cusp of becoming ex great. And uh, we like to support them at that early stage. And it's this exhibitions like this um, are a testament to the sort of inventiveness and the ambition of the collection as well and also our acquisitions committee over the years who've had the full sense to see and um, look at this work and bring it into the collection. I'd like to think what Natalie and I and colleagues have achieved is showing people the best of the new British sculpture as it was called at that time in the early 1980s but also supplementing it with uh, work by artists who were not associated with that group, who are nevertheless making incredible sculpture that were maybe pe being seen at the time in the corners of people's eyes. So we've actually reunited and regrouped people whose work have maybe shared concerns, comparable preoccupations, and has put them alongside each other to point to uh, points of connectivity, uh, and also important points of difference, different attitudes, different traditions they were looking to.